notion that secular uh, religions were doing paralysis, uh, and so we go to the conversation by Moshe that uh, messianism between evolution and revolution. Uh, as uh, none of these uh, uh, speakers actually need uh, uh, any presentation, I just go uh, uh, straight to say that Moshe Gidel is a uh, uh, professor emeritus at the uh, Abbey University in Jerusalem, and uh, the rest is already history. So, uh, Moshe, if you have the floor. First, let me start with the confession. I don't know what it is. After reading for almost 40 years, material mysteries, I came to the conclusion that to really there is no we may find a common denominator, but we may speak better about the constellation of messianic ideas, which from time to time are connected, from time to time disconnected. If we look back to the 20th century, we can see a return of a deep interest in messianism in whatever sense you can imagine. The most important theological book in the 20th century is called The Star of Redemption by Rothbard. The most important book in Jewish studies is Sholem, Sabbath and Chief of the Messiah. The most important Jewish movement, global movement, that's known as Mubavitch Hasidism. It's strongly messianic. It doesn't matter how you, you understand it, it's quite obvious. It's again a strongly messianic part in the Lubavitch, you have a less messianic But the messianic issue is quite evident. In the, we have a long series of books on messianism, written by many, many scholars, including myself. Incomparably more. The 19th century. Not a little more, a comparable more, which is the result of a variety of different reasons from the Holocaust to the establishment of the state of Israel. All of those books are inspired in one way or another, I hope I'm not, uh, by historical events which uh, have no correspondence. In the 19th century or earlier. And that is one of the reasons, not the only reason, but one of the reasons of this revival of interest in messianism. Mm -hmm. I don't have the time to enter too much in how strong this revival is by giving the numbers of books dedicated to this issue, in comparison to almost nothing in the 19th century. I think about two issues. So it's quite evident that uh, Judaism entered some form of transformation. Part of it, the result of disillusion, many members write this affair, to so prolong to manage Zionist emerge out of this righteous affair. Other events, like the Holocaust, contributed much to this dissolution with the other bigger society, acculturation, enlightenment, to one world, they contribute too much in the different direction. So, uh, this is the big picture. We are still in a very strong messianic interest. You can't imagine how many conferences on Messianism there were before 2000. If you were sure, it's going to be who knows how many movements. And myself, I participated in some of them. First, his name was that, because everyone was sure it's going to happen, it must happen. Mm -hmm. So even if nothing happened, even in those forms of service, Messianism was an option. It turned to be a very modest option. 
But nevertheless, the word conferences, the people are to understand what's going to happen. And uh, that's the result of a fear that things are going to explode. So that is the background of course of my lecture. So I have tried now to give you a survey of the messianic ideas from the beginning up to the century. And to show how many constellations of ideas there The Hebrew Bible is not especially messianic, you don't read it through the lens of Christianity. Meaning the Hebrew Bible has a certain vision of the time, which is basically secret. Forget about the Iliad and all this stuff, but I don't want to end it. It's quite obvious that the time is cyclical, there is the Sabbath, if you will, the celebration, there's a year, there's, there's seven years. Meaning it's quite obvious that no one expected the linear. The fact that uh, the commandments were promulgated by God. So we have them to. The problem is how to realize it. But the idea in the Hebrew Bible is not to go beyond it, to something better, which cannot be better, but actually to fulfill it. Now, there are also other voices, like the prophets, conceived to be one of the sources of the linear time. I mean, there is going to be like Messiah, the second, there is going to be a time of redemption. But in two days, there are minor voices in comparison to Christianity. If I'm looking to the Hebrew Bible and not to the interpretation of the Hebrew Bible via the lens of Christianity, Messianism doesn't have a place. For sure, there are two forms of Messiahs in the Hebrew Bible one is the king. Anointed king in Hebrew, Mashiach is anointed. He's a king, not the Messiah, in our terms. And the great priest, who is also anointed. That's why it's Messiah, but they were the icons of stability. They are not going to change anything. They would like to have the same situation. In addition to them, to the Messiah, and we have another reading with the prophets I mentioned earlier, who are in a way dissidents. In comparison to the king, in comparison to the high priest. What happened at a certain moment? The temple and the Jewish Empire disappeared. With them disappeared all the three elites. No more king, actually. No more high priest, no temple. No more prophets. What do you mean, no more prophets? The rabbis, the other in the temple, this kind of decided there are no more prophets. So we don't have any other prophets. How does the structure of the temple? That means that they didn't exist, but it's a much higher rights, we don't know what So, what is the structure of the second temple? The three elites disappear. Prohib instead another elite, and the elite of what's called the rabbis. People who are not high priests, no kings, no prophets. By the attempt to stabilize this form of secret life, meaning how to give today's men whatever circumstances. And they develop slowly. The concept of the remote Messiah, I would like to emphasize this issue. The remote Messiah, Messiah will come to them. Meanwhile, we are responsible for the religious right of the communities who should establish it and not to attempt it, to offer alternatives. That is the great project of Travis. How to create a religion who believe, which believes in the temple and in the future redemption. But by now, we are invested in another project. To explain this project, I can tell you an anecdote, which actually tells all the story I have told this today. 
by some forms of ideologies which are not happening as I explained earlier. Meaning some of them are coming with ideas basically from Greek religion. Meaning philosophy, philosophical. Meaning what does Messiah mean? Messiah means the perfection of one. Okay. Who is the Messiah? Someone who excels in the process of intellection. He became what's called in the Middle Ages agent intellect, cosmic intellect. So it's for sure that that's not what happens here, but that's not the revolution. There is a certain type of claiming, I should mean example. But the idea is I'm not going to go back to the land of Israel and create the temple of this stuff. It's not denied, but not mentioned. By someone who claimed that he is a Messiah and very good to me. So, such an example is uh, a Kabbalist in the 17th century, named Abraham of Rabia, whom I paid a lot of my free life, <laughs> and who claimed that he was a Messiah of the several times, and he was attacked as such. So, it's not a matter of misunderstanding. However, and his many, many writings will have something like 50 books. We don't have a call for changing the historical situation, going back to, to the land that created the emperor. Because for him, like for Aristotle, his independence, we can't attain the messianic experience now. Not all of us can. 
that curve in this time. So his vision is if you take a risk. And in the first term of Masaya, then you want to do the idea of Masaya. So we created a system how you can redeem yourself. Techniques, you know, it's one of the most popular. He believed this is the Messiah because he's distributing the technique, the practice. How do we become a Messiah? Everyone can, everyone can do it in this free time. So we can expect movements or the dramatic change. He wanted the church to inspire a strong religious and intellectual life. So it was not enough for him to go and speak about many places in South America, Spain, Italy, Sicily, Eastern Empire. And he made a comment, it's not just the Latin books. The remaining thing was persecuted. But uh, he even initiated a messianic enterprise to go to speak with the Pope. And he made a real effort to meet the Pope at a certain moment. The Pope was busy. <laughs> it was hard, he wanted to go to the second custom in north of Macron, uh, Abulabi, Corbyn. He tended to enter, yes, it was totally wrong to burn him. He claimed that he'd see him already. Uh, the place to learn that the Pope died on the spot. Now, it's a very nice, they were thinking in the midst. The problem is that all the economies of death collaborated. The Pope died himself. That was told by Catholic historians in that time. So he didn't attempt to speak about who the Pope, in my opinion, let my people go, like Moses and Pharaoh. He also did not attempt to convert the Pope to some historians again. In my opinion, he wanted to speak about the universal religion. They can save humanity. And he wanted to have to die in this concept for a large part of the world. To convince him that actually he has the solution. The solution is not Judaism in the normal sense, but a mystical technique, which he believed to be a place, but very different from the big one. So he failed because the Pope refused to help him. Understood it for sure that the sign of and he died on the spot, but that's uh, too strong to resist a vision. He continued his uh, spiritualistic form of pessimism. At a certain moment, people misunderstood it because people believe that this same Messiah is the Messiah, the apocalyptic Messiah. He spoke about the mystical Messiah. Other people understood. Messiah, so they started to write letters to Barcelona, to the rabbis, and other things. Because they understood that he's speaking about their messages. He was speaking about another message. So you can see what the Messiah can do. Everyone can see his message. However, he would remain. <coughs> I would say, despite that he was excommunicated, and most of all, his books remain. They were copied and many, many manuscripts, even more. They were translated in Latin in the Renaissance and it took part from the Italian Renaissance. That is, other manuscripts. People studied that. So, that is one type of a messiah having a messianic plan, a messianic idea, very different from all the others. Few of them didn't understand. But they contributed to another version of this image, different from the apocalyptic one. Apocalypse has no meaning, that's the most important. Living in an Aristotelian universe, 
down into convenience uh, categories. And the Sami was of the Messiah, which he is a high school of the Messiah. Messiah revealed to him with the Lord that he was. But at the moment, he became a little bit not uh, nervous, with the no way of Messiah would come. And then we had this how do we discussion the Messiah and the other Messiah was to come. The Messiah then he never stayed on the moon to come. And in your teaching, as long as I told you, it's going to kill you. Don't ask me now why I have a life. It depends on you. If you are going to be able to convince all the people about what I told you, I shall come. But if not, it's, it's no day. What is the content of what the Messiah told us? We don't know exactly, but we can approach it. He told him some form of natural names. Because it's very much a doctor, a prophet, and other religious names, how to ascend from life. That was the claims. So, in my opinion, what the Messiah told him, don't ask me. <laughs> if everyone will come to me, I, I should come. You are coming to me. I, I came, but uh, I didn't move. <laughs> you have problems, medical problems, okay, it's all right, don't ask me questions. I gave you the answer. So here we have a totally different problem. This is very difficult. Which is messianic, because we have the Messiah speaking there. Right? We have a Shemdo committing into writing. The view which became, and this standard became the logo of Hasidism. Not just in the rest of the text, it is the logo of Hasidism. What happened later on in the 20th century is actually based on this assumption. Messiah will come when my wisdom is going to be widespread. So that is the garbage. So here we have three different types. One magical, one astral, one philosophical. None of them basically not communicating with himself. Who do we have a colloquy with the three messiahs? They don't understand each other. They won't claim for sure that it's by messianic, but this messianic is so, so different. But that's an example of what is the major examples about the people and their writings, not just rumors. This fragmentation and interpretation can be better visited by the collective mysteries. Remember it from the second. I said misunderstanding. <laughs> <laughs> now, then we can see, and then I'm going to enter now the 20th century, because it's more interesting. The apocalyptic messages had some problems. How do the other person can believe in apocalyptic messages? Like what is right for many, many others? They don't believe in it. They are believing in some form of more Apollachian type of certain evolution. And here we have the big example. Martin Cooper had a very ambivalent attitude to Messias. He was concerned much more in some form of education, long range education, to transform society and a better society. Nothing about it. He envisioned the Messias and the children. Actually, not the real Messiah, according to his definition. There's something worse than it for a day or two. And he wrote another, you know, to illustrate the apocalyptic versus his message, and for the sake of death. 
Noi ce egoismul hasidică? Asta sunt disclasi cu alții de zemis, cu alții de politică, nu le-ai putea neapolea. Și de asta nu ar fi mai spiritual. Nu știu, nu pot să nu există. Să nu există mai multe chestii. 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 Să nu există mai multe Yeah. It is contemporary. It was pretty great extent is uh, following after some moment in the speak. Was Gershon Kruger, who dedicated, according to his own vision, almost half of the what he wrote on this series. I believe it's a little bit of exaggeration, but that's the way he's put it. For him, as an ist, not really for him personally, for him as a scholar, as an ist is a politics. The way he looked to Judaism, and not his personal revelation of the sense, not his personal revelation, was that actually the messianic ideas are operating in Palex. And he wrote, as I mentioned earlier, his most important book, and probably the most important book. On the book was published in 1957. I'm sure it was exactly 60. The part is about the celebration that the book for his anniversary. And there, it's a very important moment which, in my opinion, escapes completion at the world. Including all the two German editions of all the work, volumes, 67 volumes, six of them, in my opinion, that appeared. He spoke in the power of He said, Look, now we really know. Until now, we only speculate about what this is. After Shoram, we know. We know this actually, we know the Jacob Trump. And now we have a good idea, very nice, that is called the PMZ. And then we added three words, which are not very And now we see the degradation. That's a new degradation. So here we can see the two major thinkers. One of the other, another one is called the human being. Explain why it's important. Confront with each other. In the same way, scholarship is fine, but it was not really in what you wrote about. That's the degradation. Churn did ask, 1957, but 1961, too, we would be exploring. They are not exactly connected to this things. But here we can see the difference between scholarship. Shorak claimed that he portrays what he found in the Jewish tradition. Not that his conviction should be removed. Uber spoke about his conviction. He had a children according to his philosophical conviction. Yeah. 
statements that I was given from the point of view of the evolution of the spirit. But it was for materials, it was materialized. Sure, I have some. But what is important is that children of the world, what both of them, against political type of Zionism, and they prefer the totally different paths of opinion, meaning to bring some form of sentiment of human culture into the land of Israel, to create a society, to do with the state. Show cooperation, cooperation with the Arabs, with the idea, the idea that the children became a little bit more, more suspected, suspicious about this, but the Uber think that the strong and his conviction. But here we have the tolerated and the same idea disputed. Also in political terms, we need to oppose the state of Israel after it was how to put it uh, with the expectation that something better can appear. It's a deep conviction. And this conviction was extraordinarily powerful up to 67. 67 is a moment, six day war. It's like a moment of change. Sure, it was the left. And personally speaking, Against the he believed that the state is a community, but that is not his community. Against his will, in a lot of sense, and the people are from most of the right wing intellectuals, thinking of all this. All of the work is the ex students. I assume you would say also his best students. Which turned from Sherman to the left to the right, even more than right. Doesn't mean that they were messianic, but uh, their conviction was different from Sherman. Assuming that the state of Israel is the beginning of redemption. And that's why community is very important, because it's not just an even the development, there's also some form of return to the old times. So here we can see how two scholars teaching in the same university. What is the best relationship? I think that Schroeder was a student who were in a way difficult time. We have the same idea about the same And after six, uh, six day war, we have in Israel from political view, a much more active writing politics. And then, parallel to it, we have the Rubavitch movement, which is another form of politics. Another third movement, which is a minor, maybe for of two of messages, but it is actually become stronger in the last decade. Uh, what is called Dakar of Ratsra, as it is. A master who died in 1810, who believed that he is the Messiah, but in our own weak, doubtful way. He didn't have a successor, but he was a genius. Now there's a survival, a revival. It's not a revival. Every new year, perhaps up to 100 to 100, it's gone. It's more. So I assume that we are now more and more in a messianic type of fellowship. People who are scholarship and they can learn a lot of these things. Read the best scholars. You want all of the best scholars, I don't speak about it. These are people who have the Messiah, but they don't. 